How you doing? I'm your man, John Wilson. Welcome to the Turbo Edition of Scatter Plots. Scatter Plots and Associations. This is a scatter plot. It's a graph which compares two different sets of data. Basically, we have the x-axis and the y-axis. In this graph right here, the scatter plot compares reading levels to the overall height of the children. And as we can see, as we move from left to right, for the most part, the data increases. This is known as having a positive association. When both items being measured, both quantities increase, that's a positive association. So why would the reading level increase and the height increase? Well, think about it. If you're a kid, as you get older, your reading level should increase. You're probably also getting taller. So that makes logical sense. If we have a positive association, we probably also have what's known as a negative association. Overall, the data is trending downward. Two items that may have a negative association will be something like mm, maybe temperature and the number of snowboards that you sell. If the temperature is going up, the number of snowboards you sell is going to go down. Uh, what else could have a negative association? Um, what about your car? You fill up your car at the gas station, you start off with a certain number of gas, a certain amount of gallons. But as you increase the miles that you drive, on that tank of gas, the amount of gas in the car is going to go down. So if one goes up and one goes down, quantity-wise, that's a negative relationship. We also have something that's known as no association whatsoever. If you look at the data that we have graphed right here, the dots are kind of all over the place. When something has no association, it's because those variables have nothing to do with each other, such as the number of people in a room wearing white t-shirts and the number of clouds in the sky. Those have nothing to do with each other at all whatsoever. So if we were to count the clouds in the sky, if we could, and the number of white t-shirts in the room, and we did that over an extended period of time, different rooms, different number of t-shirts, different clouds, we would see that there's really no association or correlation between them. Inside of our scatter plot, we have some different types of data. If a lot of the data is grouped together, that is known as a cluster. We have a cluster of data here, and we have a cluster of data here. If you have one or two or a couple dots that are kind of far away or kind of on their own, away from the rest of the data, that is known as an outlier. So clusters, big groups of data all together, outliers, little teeny tiny pieces of data all by themselves. In addition to being positive and negative or having no association, data can also be linear or nonlinear. When most of the data falls along a straight line, that is known as a linear association. Because most of the data here, with the exclusion of this one outlier, the majority of the data falls along a straight line. And I can draw that right here. For the most part, straight line. Here though, if we look at this data, it starts to go up, then it goes down. Since the majority of the data does not fall along a straight line, that would be known as a non linear association. So we have positive, negative, and no association, and then we have linear and non-linear associations. And I also want to point out the word correlation, because when we talk about scatter plots, association and correlation kind of mean the same thing. So that's what scatter plots are. That's the introduction to them. We're going to dig deeper into them right now. So this is a scatter plot right here, and usually this is what you start off with a blank graph, and you have some data that you need to graph. So here, this data talks about your age in years and your height in inches. Age is my input, output is height. Just looking at this, age and height, what type of association do you think this data is going to have, positive or negative? As you get older, starting off at age 6, what's probably going to happen to your height? That's right, it's going to go up. So age increases, height increases, positive relationship. We're going to graph this data right now. We're going to graph x comma y. Pretend that these are coordinate pairs. So we have really 6 comma 45. We know how to graph that. We go to 6 on the x, and we go to 45 on the y. And we're going to graph the rest of these points. 8 comma 50, 10 comma 55, 12 comma 61 is right about there, and 14 comma 63 right about there, I'd say. Now, if you look, for the most part, this data is going up, like we said, 
positive association, but then it begins to taper off kind of at the end. I mean, that makes logical sense as well. As you get older, yes, you're growing, but eventually your growth will start to slow down and you'll kind of plateau where you won't grow anymore. Now, if we kept going here and we took this all the way to maybe 80, you might even see some shrinkage there. That's a scary fact, right? You'd be getting smaller. Looking at this data here, we can agree it has a positive association. And more detailed than just having a positive association, it has a linear association. Do you see any outliers here? Any data that's kind of far away from the rest of the data? No, neither do I. No outliers. And there's no clusters, in, there's no clusters here either. Most of the data is kind of the same distance apart. So there's no clusters. Now, could I add a point here that may give us an outlier? Sure. Well, what if we had a really, really big four-year-old? Four-year-old who was maybe 70 inches tall. Whoa, that's a big baby. That would be an outlier because it's far away from the rest of the data. So know what outliers are, know how to graph coordinate pairs, and you're on your way to truly understanding scatter plots. Once we understand what a scatter plot is, we can talk about something called a trend line or a line of best fit. It is a line, a straight line, that best fits the data. Only in linear associations, though. You can only draw a trend line or a line of best fit if you have a linear association, which means most of the data falls along a straight line. If you have a non-linear association, you cannot draw a trend line. So here, linear association, trend line. A trend line is a straight line, like I said, that is drawn through the center of the data. You want to try to have the same number of points above and below the line. If you do, that's a good trend line. We look here, we have about four points above, four points below. That is a good trend line. Once again, remember, you must have a linear straight association. It can be positive, it can be negative, but it has to be linear. If we look here, I can draw a trend line for this data because there's a linear association. I can also draw a trend line for this data. We kind of ignore that little outlier. And once again, trend line, trend line, linear positive, linear negative. Can I draw a trend line for this one? Can I draw a trend line here? No, I can't. Why? Because it's non-linear. Really, there's not even an association between this data. It doesn't go up or down. It's kind of just all over the place. You have no association. It's non-linear. No trend line can be drawn. But now once we know that we can draw a trend line or if we're already given a trend line, I need to understand how to write an equation in slope intercept form which is y equals mx plus b for that trend line. So if I look here at this trend line, the good thing about it is I can visually identify my y-intercept right here at zero. All I need to do to write an equation for this is identify the slope. Very important point. The dots don't matter. When we are writing an equation for the trend line, we kind of ignore the dots. You pretend they don't exist. You need any two points from the line, from the line. Now, if a point happens to fall on the line, you want to use it, great. But I'm not using this point or this point in my slope. I'm using any points from the line. Like I said, we visually identify the y-intercept as 0, 0, which is great because that's an easy point that I can use for my slope. So 0, comma 0. I need one more coordinate pair for my slope. So I'll use maybe 14, comma 140. That's a good one because it falls right there at a lattice point where the grid lines intersect. It's not going to be a decimal. I can visually see it's going to be 14, comma 140. I run this through my slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's going to give me 140 minus 0 over 14 minus 0. I get 140 over 14, so my slope is equal to 10. Once I know the slope, I can write an equation y equals 10x, no y-intercept because my y-intercept was 0. I know that the slope was 10. In the context of this problem, it means that there's 10 paper. But I want to do an equation for this trend line. 
Notice that this does not have a y-intercept of zero. But the y-intercept falls in between 56 and 72, so I'm gonna say 16 is the distance between them, so this is gonna be 64. That's my y-intercept, that also gives me one coordinate pair for my slope. I need one more, so it looks like, hey, it just so happens that this right here is a good point, 60 comma 72. Running this through the slope formula again, I'm gonna get 72 minus 64 over 60 minus zero. That gives me eight over 60, which simplifies down to two over 15. I know my y-intercept is 64, so I can write the equation as y equals two over 15x plus 64. We identify the slope as 2 fifteenths. We identify the slope as 2 fifteenths, which means that for every two degree increase in temperature corresponds to a 15% increase in humidity. That's Scatterplots. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Goodbye.